Hello, Blake Rudis here, and today I want to introduce you to something really, really cool. I've been working on this for about two months. It's a really cool concept that I want to share with you called the five tone heat map or the tonal heat map. It's going to give you the ability to see the tones in your image in pure color and allow you to edit them in a heat map style. Think about those guys that look at your windows and show you where heat's coming in in the summer so that you can better uh, treat your windows. It's the same concept, but for your tones. So you'll see that this heat map looks something like this and you're like, what the heck? Why would I ever use this on my photographs? Well, let's go ahead and jump in because I got some actions I want to share with you and I've got a lot of really cool knowledge that's going to open up all kinds of avenues for you in your post-production. So I want to teach you this new concept that I've been working with called the five tone heat map. And what it is, is it's a heat map for the tones in your image to see your image in terms of colors. Okay. Now this concept is kind of difficult to grasp and I understand that. So there's actions for you, but I do not want you to click on that link and download these actions until you've watched this video in its entirety. Got it. We cool with that. You promise me you can do that. Okay. Just wait. The reason why is that I've got a lot of cool stuff I've got to share with you. And it comes from a concept I've been trying to teach for over five years now. And this concept comes from the zone system that Ansel Adams produced that he taught for pretty much his entire existence as a photographer and a photographer educator. And what he was teaching people is how to see their tones in their image and where their image in terms of black and white might need more contrast in the light and dark areas, looking at zones from zero to, to zone 10. So basically 11 zones of tones. And that's a great concept to teach, but everyone before us was at an advantage. Why? Because they were already shooting in black and white. They were shooting in terms of tone. You give them a couple years and they're probably going to have it pretty dialed down. Maybe not be a, a wizard of it or a professional of it, but be pretty close. So now we're at a disadvantage because everything we see is in color. Now, this photograph that you're seeing here is a color image. It was an Olympic National Park, beautiful uh, rainforest image here, but it, it works. And why does it work? And I know why it works, because in looking at it in terms of tone, I can see that we have a nice separation between light and dark from pure white to pure black. Some areas even blowing out, but it's still acceptable because of the high contrast. It just works. We've got a nice smooth gradation between black and white and everything in between. This is the ideal concept that you want for nice, impactful black and white images. But teaching this can be a nightmare. Why? Because if you look at the gradient, map, what the gradient map does is it maps out our tones to the colors that we give it. So we're telling our image to be two colors, black and white, and have a nice smooth transition to every color in between, which creates a beautiful black and white photograph, just like we see here. But now there's more difficult images like this image. It's a Milky Way, Arches National Park. You got balanced rock right here. Beautiful night to be shooting the Milky Way. The problem with this is if we do that gradient map concept here, if I turn this to a black and white gradient map, what does it look like? Well, it looks like we have a lot of dark, a lot of dark around it, and the lightest light area in our image is the Milky Way. So when we turn this off, we think, eh, it looks all right, right? But there's more information in here that can come out. And I know that because I know that this area is not pure white. But how do we know that? Well, this whole concept came about by teaching, um, doing teaching editing of the Milky Way in a live event a couple months ago. So I'm going to add a gradient map here. And this gradient map is going to be this five tone heat map concept that I'm going to show you. So I don't want you to look at this and be scared. I don't want you to look at this and be frightened. I just want you to understand that what this gradient map is doing now is it's saying, okay, pure black is on the left, pure white is on the right. So this image is telling us that we have a lot of pure black in here, but no pure white. We do have a little bit of mid-tone that's happening right here, but look at this. The area that we thought in this image that was the closest to what would be on the white hand side of the gradient map is actually in the lower mid-tone portion of the photo. If I press OK and turn this off, now look at that. Now when we look at this, we can visually see in a visual color representation that looks like a heat map or a heat generated image, like you would see with heat generated imagery. Have you ever seen those people that use those little, um, those little, I don't know what they call them, like scanners or something like that to see where um, heat is coming in through your windows to, to make better window treatments? That's the concept that I'm talking about here. Because what this shows me is that our image is predominantly black and transitioning into our cyan colors, which is our uh, our lower mid tones, and only really getting to our 
yellow midtone area right in the middle of our midtones. So our midtones are the lightest portion of this photograph and there's not a whole lot of them. So how do we modify this? What can we do with this heat map now? So now we're going to transition into outside of what is the heat map into how do we edit the heat map? And as I said before, at the beginning of this tutorial, I have actions for you that are going to do all of this for you. And I will discuss them at the end of this uh, segment here. But what I want you to do is just watch what I'm doing and, and, and take notes, do what you got to do so that you can see and teach yourself how to, how to see in terms of tone. So now if I go above this black, this background image and underneath our gradient map, I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer. And this curves adjustment layer is essentially going to be a modifier underneath the heat map because watch what happens. You ever hear someone say that your whites are clipping? Well, what that means is that you take the curve and you can see in this curve that all we have is mid-tone to black, right? So if I bring this over, you can actually see how the image starts to take on some more heat or some more lights. And we get a much bigger, more dynamic range in the photograph from light to dark. If I turn this gradient map off, you can see that there's a lot of data in this image that can actually be used to make this Milky Way pop out and pop off the screen. So if I were to leave it like this, that's a, that's a little much because it's kind of hazy. The bottom doesn't look very good. It doesn't look good at all. But if I go and turn this gradient map back on and look at the properties of this curve and maybe bring this down a little bit, we can bring some of that black back and make all of those modifications pretty much just happen to the Milky Way. Turn off this gradient map and look at the difference now. Look at how much more bulbous and how much more shiny and how that Milky Way just blasts off the page. It's a much more dynamic approach to editing in terms of tone because I can visually see in color. And here's the thing. Just so you know, I, I work a lot with curves, a ton with curves. This whole zone system express thing that I've created here is all based on the curves adjustment layer with luminosity masking, okay? I don't think in the history of me ever working with curves, I've ever done something this extreme. And the reason why I haven't done that is because I haven't visually seen what's happening to the image underneath the color version of my photo to watch that happen. I'm actually comfortable with this type of curve now where I would not have been comfortable with this type of curve in the past. If it's too much, you can always take this modifier and drop the opacity down a little bit. And now you've got a nice, more bulbous, beautiful, shiny Milky Way. So that's the first way we can use this five tone heat map concept. The second way we can use this five tone heat map concept is to make a mask from the modifications that we've done. And instead of applying it globally to the image, because this is a global curve right here, instead of applying it globally to the image, we can use this global adjustment underneath to make a mask of the selected colors that we want in our image. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these points here. I'm going to delete this point right here, and I'm just going to move this point all the way over. This gets us back to the traditional five tone heat map with the modifier underneath. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same concept. I'm going to try to make the Milky Way come out a little bit more by boosting up these midtones, maybe dropping down these darks. And then I'll bring up these lights a little bit, maybe bring down the lights a little bit. Okay, that looks about right right there. That looks pretty good. That's gonna be a pretty darn good selection for that Milky Way there. Okay, I'll bring this dark down just a little bit more. Okay, so now I can make a curve on top of all of this. So I'll make a new curves adjustment layer. And with the mask selected on this new curves adjustment layer, I'm going to go up to select and I'm going to go to color range. And with the color range, I can actually go to my image here and I can select the cyan areas there. So if I press and hold shift, I can select even more. So now I'm making a pure mask selection. If we look over here in the right hand corner, this is making a mask on that curves adjustment layer specifically for the Milky Way and a little bit of this area down here too. And that's okay. If we move the fuzziness up, it's going to make a bigger selection for all of that Milky Way area and I'll press okay. So now this curve is all by itself. So now I can go ahead and turn off the, the heat map and the heat map modifier, and I can bring this curve up and look at how we can bring up just the lights and darks within the Milky Way itself and nowhere else in the image except for just what's happening right there inside the center of that Milky Way and make it much more bulbous and bright and beautiful. Okay, so now it looks like we have a little bit of uh, like gargling within the middle of that mask. So if I press Alt or Option, I look at that mask, that's because we didn't select what's happening right here in the middle of this. And it's not that big of a deal. The cool thing about this being on a mask is I can use my brush, I can paint with the color white, 
and if I paint right here, it's gonna make a good selection for that gassy center of our Milky Way right in there too, okay? And then if I turn, if I just look right back at that curve, now you can see where we can get that area back there, okay? That looks pretty good. So now this curves adjustment layer is only for the Milky Way. I basically have a mask attached to a curves adjustment layer that is segregating the Milky Way and the Milky Way only. Now we do have a little bit of the bottom area of the image. This little uh, looks like uh, light pollution at the bottom and that's okay because it's a mask. I can paint with black and when I paint with black, it's going to brush away anything that's going on down below. And now I really only have that selection for the Milky Way. So what I did here was I used the five tone heat map concept to go ahead and make a selection for the colors that were prevalent in that five tone heat map to make it easier to make that selection. We've heard of things like luminosity masking before. This is kind of like that. It's more like what we call range masking or color range masking. So if you wanna see why this is successful, we can turn this heat map back on and actually just click this and drag it right above that curve. Now look at the difference between that Milky Way. Now look at this heat map here. This heat map is showing me that I've got a nice transition inside the Milky Way between almost pure black transitioning all the way into what's almost pure white in the photograph. And that adds more contrast to the image, which in turn makes it more visually appealing and more pleasing to look at. So as I said before, I made actions for you here, okay? I don't want you to get too caught up in some of the things that I was doing here. Uh, that's why I just wanted you to watch and listen. But now I'm gonna show you how these five-tone heat maps work with the action. You're gonna see it's a lot more cleaner and more beautiful too. So I'm gonna open up my actions panel here. And in this actions panel, it's called five-tone heat map by Blake Rudis here. I'm just gonna click this top one called five-tone heat map and press play. You'll see that it does exactly what we just did in this video, but it gives it to you in a folder. So no matter where you are in your workflow, it's gonna pop in and give you that five-tone heat map. You can use this heat map at any point in your workflow to check your work. Now, obviously I've taught many people how to see in terms of tone with the gradient map. So if you're already pretty good at it, this might be a little rudimentary for you, but if you're just getting into this idea of visually seeing your tones in terms of colors, this is going to be extremely helpful. So with this five-tone heat map here, and with the five-tone heat map on top, you have the curve underneath that's going to make your modifications to the image below. So we can bring this up and then drop this down, and you'll see that I've already made a much more robust Milky Way photograph very quickly, very easily, using just these two segments here. Now, I've done quite a bit of Milky Way editing before, and it's very tricky. It's tricky because exactly that, exactly what we talked about in the beginning of this, that the Milky Way itself is actually more on the mid-tone level than it is in your lights. So people look towards the lights to think that the Milky Way is gonna pop out with the highlights, but it doesn't because it's actually a mid-tone. So using something like Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw is very difficult to bring out the Milky Way in a very natural way because you have to bring out and resurrect those um, mid-tones from within it. That's why it's really easy to see exactly what's happening with the tones in your image by using this five tone heat map concept. If I were to go ahead and delete these points right here, we could also use this specifically to make a better selection for the image too. So if I bring this up, make that brighter and then bring this down, okay? And then bring this down a little bit here too. Now we're segregating our Milky Way out. And if you look here, you see this thing that says cyan selection, I'll just go ahead and press play on it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna automatically pop me into that color range that we just did before. And now I have the option to select more. So I can press and hold shift and get more of the colors that are within this Milky Way. And obviously because the fuzziness is set to 200%, I could bring this down a little bit to really just get that Milky Way dialed in there, okay? And that's gonna do it just like that. And this curve is completely separate than what's happening right here, okay? So if I were to go ahead and bump up the curve here, now I'm making a much more bright selection for that Milky Way and bringing it out. Now, because it's a mask, the cool part about this is that you have the opportunity to do all kinds of things. So I can make a clipping mask above this and add some colors in here too. So if I were to go down here to my gradient map, I'm gonna select a gradient map that looks, um, let's say like this uh, purple to blue. Okay, and press okay, and press alt or option. I'm just showing you some clever things right now. I'm not giving you my gradient maps. If I press alt or option, that's going to allow this gradient map to clip itself only into this mask. So now if I change this to something like soft light, I'm now color grading that Milky Way 
specifically within this mask. And if I don't want to color grade all of the stuff that's happening down here in the light pollution, I'll just Alt or Option click on that mask, and then I'll paint with black on that mask down there to get rid of that, okay? And then look at the before and the after. Oh, let's turn that one off. Eek, that one goes off, okay? So now we have some color added to that Milky Way. It's much more robust and much more natural looking too. If we drop the opacity here, we get a much better, more natural appearing Milky Way that now actually busts off the page a little bit more than it did before. And you can control all of this via masks, blend if, everything I've ever taught you can be incorporated right here into these five tone heat maps from your gradients to your masks, to your blend if, to all the different tools and techniques. The main takeaways here before you go ahead and download those actions, the five tone heat map is nothing more than a heat map to show you the tones and where they exist in your image. Underneath that five tone heat map is a curve. You can use that curve for two things, either one, to globally edit your entire image on a single curve, or two, use that curve underneath to segregate areas to make a selection from them. You don't have to use that, that curve underneath to make a selection either. I just showed you that because I wanted to pinpoint that Milky Way. But you could go ahead and make a selection right from the five tone heat map without even adjusting that curve underneath. And what that does allows you to make a selection for that very specific area and modify that curve. Really powerful way to edit your images. So now not only can you see the tones in your image and see what your image needs to get better tonal depth in the photograph, you can also make very precise selections for all of those tones as well. And this is all free to you. You paid nothing for this, okay? So enjoy it. Let me know what you think about it because it's a new concept I've been playing around with and I can guarantee you're gonna see this move its way into the Zone System Express. I've got a lot of really cool ideas for it that you're gonna see in the update for the Zone System Express. So again, my name is Blake Rudis. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. Please download these actions. They're 100% free and share it with your friends because this is some really cool knowledge that you do not want to keep from them. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this and pursuing your passions in post-production.